Let's look at bone homeostasis, in particular the role calcium and phosphorus have in it. Here is a normal bone, the humerus or femur. We will take a cross-sectional view of the outer part of the bone and review a little anatomy. So closer to the center of the bone, somewhere where the bone marrow is located, we have this bony area with many holes, known as the spongy bone. On the outer part, you have the more tightly packed bone, called compact bone. This is where you see the veins and arteries moving about. Three important bone cells can be located in this diagram. The tightly packed cells in the, com in the compact bone are called osteocytes. Another cell on the outer part of the bone are osteoblasts, the building cells. And also found in this area are giant multinucleated osteoclasts. We will look at these cells in more detail later on. Bone is made from collagen and minerals. Collagen provides the soft framework. And when you add the minerals, in particular calcium phosphate, this enables a soft framework to strengthen and harden, becoming bone. So for example, uh, here we have soft collagen. When we add calcium and phosphate, we get hard bone. So therefore, we can safely say that calcium and phosphorus are very important for the bone itself. And I'll do that by highlighting it, making a nice border around it. So now, let's look at some of the roles calcium and phosphorus play in our body. So calcium is important in many functions in the body, um, one of which is nerve conduction. When an impulse wants to be sent to another cell, calcium ion channels are necessary so that the neurotransmitters can be passed on, creating a successful signal. Calcium is also a second messenger. When a G protein is activated, some affected proteins target the sacroplasmic reticulum. When this occurs, the sacroplasmic reticulum secretes calcium and if supplies are depleted it sends signals to the calcium channels to send in more calcium an influx of calcium uh, calcium is also important for a successful blood clot calcium is an important part of bone because 99% of the whole calcium found in the body are stored in the bone Phosphorus is also important, and as important as calcium. So phosphorus, sorry for the incorrect spelling. Now it is an important part of the intracellular buffering system capacity. Again, intracellular buffering system capacity, which controls hydrogen molecules within the cells. Now this is vital for metabolism and cellular processes. Phosphorus is part of nucleic acids, such as the ones found in DNA, and also macromolecules. It is also a component of the cell membrane, the phospholipids. Now, phosphorus is also an important constituent of bone, as we'll soon find out. So let's talk about the different forms of calcium and phosphorus in action found in the blood. Humans have approximately 10 milligrams of calcium per 100 mil, 10 milligrams of calcium per 100 mil, and 3.5 to 4 milligrams of phosphorus per 100 mil. For calcium, we have two categories, filtrable calcium, which represents 60% of total calcium in the body, and protein-bound calcium, which represents the other 40. So I will draw blood vessels to indicate the types of calcium and phosphorus found in the body. This is just an oversimplification. So now, filtrable calcium has two other types. About 50% of the total calcium found in the body is known as ionized calcium. And this is the physiologically active form of calcium. This is the one you see in nerve conductions and calcium channels of the cell membrane. It is depicted as CA2+. 
Now, 10% of the total calcium is known as complex calcium and is usually bound to an anion bicarbonate, which is HCO2 minus, or 3 minus. And it's a major anion calcium binds to. And as mentioned, the remaining 40% of total calcium is bound to a protein, is a protein bound. And the protein is usually albumin. So this type, the calcium binds to protein albumin. And here I'll draw it into that blood vessels. So phosphorus exists primarily as orthophosphate, or PO4. Now under normal blood conditions and normal pH, approximately 80% of the phosphate is represented as hydrogen phosphate ion, HPO4, as depicted. And 20% represents as dihydrogen phosphate ion, H2PO4. And I'll just draw it inside the blood vessels. So calcium can be found in many types of food. Calcium can be found in foods such as milk, cheese, fish. You can say anything produced by a cow. Phosphorus is relatively the same and can be found in dairy products, even fish, vegetables, and fruits. Now, you are probably wondering why the words phosphorus and phosphate are used interchangeably. So what is the difference? Well, the only difference is that phosphorus is the actual element denoted as P, and phosphate is actually P with an O. P representing phosphorus, and O representing oxygen, usually four oxygens. So this is the difference between phosphorus and phosphate. So how much calcium and phosphorus do we consume daily, and where does it go? Well, human, here I'll draw human, consumes about 1,000 milligrams of calcium daily, per 100 mil of calcium daily. Now, about 150 milligrams per 100 mil of this is secreted as urine, and uh, 850 milligrams per 100 mil as feces. Now, inside the body, the extracellular fluid contains 900 milligrams per 100 mil, which exchanges continuously with the bone and cells in the body. The bone and cells have their own uh, amounts of calcium stored. Now, phosphorus, on the other hand, the daily consumption is about 1,400 milligrams per 100 mil. 1,100 is secreted as urine and 300 milligrams per 100 mil as feces. The extracellular fluid contains approximately 500 milligrams of phosphorus which exchanges with the bones and cells of the body. So now you probably have noticed that there is more calcium being excreted as feces and there's more phosphorus being excreted as urine and this is due to the homeostasis of the calcium and phosphorus within the body. And why it does this is, is a question we will look at next. So next part of the video, we will look at the bone cells in more detail and how the body maintains homeostasis with the cells and with the organs, the intestines and the kidneys. Thank you.